interesting fight coming up this weekend at Lightweight. Kicking off the main card portion of the card, we have our second fighter with the nickname of King. It's King Bobby Green. Uh, you know, King Casey O'Neill also on this card, taking on Nazareth Hawkpress. And listen, he's only 26, but at this point in Nazareth Hawkpress' career, he's starting to trade into that Eric Silva category because he only does have three losses in the UFC. And he's definitely won more than he's lost. But it's just been a weird run for Nazareth Hawkpress. So I'm going to start this video off this way because Bobby Green has been in the UFC for years and years and years. And he's taken on top contenders, reinvented himself, come back again. I mean, you look at it. He lost two fights in a row before he was able to retire Ally Aquinta. And I don't say that lightly, but he lost to Tiago Moises in a fight that he lost the first round. He made it competitive. And then he loses to Rafael Faziv his last time out, big time sec or sorry, big time third round rallied in that fight. Then he goes out there and beats Iaquinta in the first round, knocks him out. Now he's taking on Hackprest. Hackprest, when he's been an underdog, he's lost. When he's been a big favorite, he's won. The only fight where he's a big favorite and lost was against Drew Dober. He's about a minus 350 favorite. But my question is to you, Matt. At this point in the game, I know there's so many Fight Night Picks fans that are Nazareth Hackprest fans. I have an uncomfortable question to ask. How much has Nazareth Hackpress developed and evolved? And I'm not just talking about from Nazareth into Kelvin Gastelum. But how much has he evolved since he came into the UFC against Marchin Held to the fighter that you see now in front of you? Not much, but I don't really blame him. And this is the reason why. It's a lot easier to fight Martian Held than it is to fight Dan Hooker. And I just feel like his level of competition has gone up significantly. Because if you do look at Nazareth Hackbrass's first little run in the UFC, Timo Guti is only mentioned on this channel because you were there and you watched that fight in person. No other person probably knows who that is. So I just, with Hackbrass, I do feel like he was the recipient of sort of a light scheduling early on in his UFC career. I just feel like we are sort of seeing the cream rise to the top, if you will. And he isn't having as much success when he does fight the upper levels of competition. Well, that's it. He comes in, he takes on Marchin Held, who was at the top of the Bellator Mountain at one point, fighting guys in Lewiston, Maine. Look it up, it really happened. But Hackbrass loses that fight, and that's okay. Like, I mean, he was coming in, lost his pro debut, won eight fights in a row all by knockout, loses to Held by decision, then he gets back on the winning train. Then he takes on Drew Dober, loses by knockout, then he takes on Alexander Munoz, you know, team alpha male coach, and then he gets a win over Rafa Garcia, and then he fights Dan Hooker, and there were so many extenuating circumstances around that fight. I mean, Nazrat had just lost his mother. He was flying between the States and Germany. The whole COVID situation, trying to get around. Dan Hooker couldn't get a visa, but then he did. It was a wild, wild series of events. And in that fight, Nazrat had some success with his boxing. Dan Hooker became a wrestler, which is like some mythical figure. It was just a weird run. But the reason I asked that question... Hackpress was knocking guys dead before the UFC. He still looks like the same fighter now. And the weird thing about Hackpress that I just kind of question is he trained at TriStar. He trained in Germany. He trained at Kings. He's all over the place. And then for his last fight coming up against Dan Hooker, I couldn't figure out what Jimmy was training at. And then there's Farah Sahabi in the corner. It's just... There, to me, it almost seems like there's too many cooks in the kitchen. We praise some fighters for doing this, though. And I do we feel do. like that has to be mentioned. We, like, we, there's some fighters we think are amazing because of that same but, fact. But not when it's, like, all over the place. It just, it it gets really weird for me. And Nazareth's still a very young prospect. I still think he's one of the better boxers you're going to find at lightweight. It's just... We don't see a ton of leg kicks. We don't see a ton of offensive wrestling. We don't see this big jujitsu aspect of his game that's really evolved. That's the only reason I bring it up. And I say this because I was so high on Nazareth Hawkbrass at one point that coming into this fight against Bobby Green, it now makes me scratch my head because I thought Nazareth was going to be a force at 155 for a long time. Now that he's had these speed bumps and you're taking on a guy like Bobby Green, it really is tough to try and pick up the pieces. That's all. I agree 100%, but this also has to be said. Ally Quinta wasn't in that fight to win. At all. I don't think he was. That was weird. It was a weird fight. Bobby Green hits him with one shot, puts him down, knocks him out. Al just gave up. Like, Al didn't get knocked out. Al gets hit by one shot, takes a knee. Like, I don't put a lot of stock into Bobby Green's last win, even though I do kind of side towards him in this matchup. I just feel like we have to have a very fresh perspective on both these fighters, because Bobby Green looked really good in his last matchup, and he's had some losses where he's looked good. He's had some wins where he's looked bad, though, and that's the thing about Bobby Green. He always fights to the level of his competition. If they're better than him, he will. If they're worse than him, he will. And that always concerns me, especially in this matchup, because yes, Nazareth hasn't really opened up his MMA skill set as much as maybe we'd like, 
But Bobby Green's still going in there to box for them this weekend, and he's going to make this Nazrats fight, and that's what worries me, because even if Bobby Green is the better wrestler, which of course he is, he has the better ground and pound, I'd even say he has the better cardio, because we've seen Bobby Green in some ugly fights where he is still fresh in that third round, I still think for the most part he's going to go out there and box with Nazrat Hackpress. That's a dangerous thing for anybody in this division to do. So I do agree with you and I do think Green is the better mixed martial artist. I just look at this as one of those fights where he's still going to be doing his opponent's strength no matter what. For Nazrat Hackpress, his first four fights in the UFC had four knockdowns. Win, lose, or draw, he was able to knock guys down. And then we haven't really seen it out of him lately. Again, he had that win over Joaquim Silva where he knocks him out. That was two years and four months ago. A win by decision over Munoz where he defeated a lot of takedowns and beat him up on the feet and against Rafa Garcia where again Garcia is one of those guys hot and cold where is he really at but when it comes to this fight it was surprising to me that the odds open at par hack press now a plus 140 underdog Bobby Green a minus 170 favorite we talked about it Fans are behind Nazrat Hawkpress. we've seen a lot of that support in the comment section in the past and if you're one of those fans let us know down below but I look at it on Topology, 767 total votes, 77% Bobby Green, 76% by decision for the 23% that have Hawk Prost, 80% by decision. If you told me when Fight Night Picks started that Bobby Green would be favored by the fans and the odds makers to beat Nazrat Hawk Prost, I would have shaken my head and turned the camera off. Yeah, I probably would have been in the same boat too, but for Bobby Green, like, he was in the top 15 back in 2016, had this weird middle stage of his career where he just sort of fought on rank, guys, and now he's kind of back to the fighter that he once was all those years ago. I think he will be able to continue some of that momentum, and here's the fun thing about Green that I, it hasn't been talked about at all. I think Bobby Green, because he is such a fun fighter, is always a prime candidate to get, like, sort of a star coming off of a bad loss. You know, like, if Dustin Poirier really wants to fight somebody who's not in, like, the top of the division, I could see them doing him versus Bobby Green, too. I could see them doing Tony Ferguson, Bobby Green. Like, he's one of these unranked fighters who has enough of a following just because of his fighting style, and he's got a good personality, too. Like, Bobby Green gives great interviews. I highly recommend watching them. So, I do think he's always that prime candidate for, if there's ever a big opportunity in the horizon, I think Bobby Green can always step into it. Nazareth Hawkpross has great takedown defense, which is something that nobody really talks about because Dan Hooker was able to take him down and he's a striker that shouldn't happen he also has really really good striking defense as well so two big attributes if you do like Nazareth Hawkpross to go along with very very good output Bobby Green with great output as well so it is a really tough fight I have a hard time with this one I'm right on the fence I have Bobby Green right now at the start of the week but listen Power pose on the right-hand side of the screen, who must look at Conor McGregor a lot on Instagram, definitely has a good opportunity in this fight. I'm picking Bobby Green at the start of the week, but I'm right on the edge, and if I switch the pick on question mark kicks, don't be surprised. So right now, start of the week, both of us going with King Bobby Green to get the win over Nazrat Hawkprost. Again, let us know down below in the comment section who you have. Big time fights on this main card. Marcelo Rojo taking on Kyler Phillips. I can't wait for it. Let's keep it locked in with Fight Name Picks. We always say, let's, let's get, get into it. it.